kids, 1986 was a season to remember. The Mets had two players definitely on their way to the Hall of Fame, and even Lee Mazzilli was back. I got to hang a pennant on my bedroom wall. Never thought that would happen. And yet, there I was in my room. The Mets were one out away from losing the World Series. My buddy Jim was a big Yankee fan. He'd tell me the next week he had my entire phone number dialed except the last number. And as soon as the Mets made out, he was going to call. And Carter flied out, right? Surprisingly, he didn't. And you'll never believe what happened next. Jim never did get to make that call. and the Dodgers, Tuesday night at 7.30. Bring it home. There was only one goal that summer of 86, win the World Series. And the summer went as smooth as could be, except for a few fights here and there. Just a matter of time until the celebrations would begin. Live from Shea Stadium in New York, WOR-TV presents New York Mets baseball. As tonight, the Mets take on the Chicago Cubs. Pitching for the Cubs tonight, right-hander Dennis Eckersley, who's 6-9 and nine with an ERA of 4.63. And on the mound for the Mets, it's the doctor, right-hander Dwight Gooden, 14-6, and six, with an ERA of 3.04. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Ralph Geiner, along with Tim McGarver and Steve Sabrisky, and the Mets with a magic number of one. And they can control their own destiny. All they have to do to be the champions of the National League East is win here tonight. It makes no difference what the Phillies do if they do win. And I think that your wife, Ann McCarver, put it best. It's a lot like being pregnant, she said. <laughs> you know it's going to come. The event will take place, but you're going to experience some pain with it. And the Mets have had some pain because they could have clinched it way back when on Friday with Dwight Gooden on the mound. Now Dwight with a second chance. It's very interesting. The Mets had chances to clinch it back in Philadelphia over the weekend and Monday night in St. Louis. But they did uh, escape the road trip with a 1-4 and four record. And only one other divisional championship has been clinched here at Shea Stadium. That was in 1969. And wouldn't you know it, Ralph, I was on deck when Joe Torre hit to the double play. Right now, I've got a different perspective, however. It's a little bit easier up here, isn't it? Sure it? is. The fans stormed the field, and I hung a pennant on my wall. 1985 Cy Young Award winner Dwight Gooden leads New York against Houston's Mike Scott, the man who threw a no-hitter to win their division title. Exclusive coverage of the League Championship Series begins Tuesday night on ABC Sports. Mike Scott, he had been a Met and wasn't any good, and here he was in the opposing dugout, ready to terrorize the Mets. <laughs> I'll tell you all about Mike Scott some other time, but let's get back to why I had a pillow over my head. And he takes the first step toward doing that as Backman flies softly to Rice in left. Two outs from the World Championship.
This really wasn't going to happen, was it? Champagne and the Commissioner's Trophy are sitting in the Red Sox clubhouse. Here's Keith Hernandez. And that's hit to dead center with Henderson going to run it down. Two outs. Somewhere in Manhattan, my buddy Jim dials my phone number, except for the last digit. Lined into left field, base hit for Carter, and the Mets are still alive. Curveball, and that's going to be hit to center, base hit. And now suddenly with two out in the 10th inning, the tying runs are aboard, and Ray Knight will be the batter. And that's going to be hit into center field, base hit. Here comes Carter to score, and the tying run is at third in Kevin Mitchell. 90 feet away in Kevin Mitchell, and the possible winning run at first in Ray Knight. And here's Mookie. And it's going to go to the backstop. Here comes Mitchell to score the tying run, and Ray Knight is at second base. So the winning run is at second base with two out, three and two to Mookie Wilson. Little roller up along first, behind the bag, it gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight and the Mets win it. In game seven, the Mets got it done and we were on our way to the ticker tape parade. parade even by New York standards. Police say more than two million people jammed into Lower Manhattan to cheer the Mets. They flowed over police lines and crushed cars in an effort to see and touch Gary Carter and Keith Hernandez and Lenny Dykstra and Mookie Wilson and the rest of the Mets. The Mets made of the city of New York a small town with love and affection where everybody in this city knows one another. But on this ball player's day, it was a ball player who got the most applause. 1986, year of the Mets. 1987, year of the Mets. 1988, year of the Mets. Mookie was right. The dynasty had just begun. And even though Dwight Gooden had overslept and missed the parade, soon it would be April and he'd be pitching on opening day. for the 